Hello, everybody. It's a Thursday morning, about three minutes to 10. I trust you had a good night's rest last night and um, everyone's doing okay. Another time to read God's word. Hopefully, you'll be able to say something that can um, spur you on, so to speak, to, to greater depth in your faith walk, more strength for your journey. And uh, just want to uh, be of help and encouragement. Today, I want to share on um, Romans chapter 12. I believe uh, probably of all the chapters, at least in the book of Romans, probably well, one of my favorite uh, chapters of the many letters that Paul wrote because it's such a practical um, presentation. His writing here is, is sort of the beginning of sharing what we can do in a practical sense to live out our faith. And um, if you know much about the book of Romans, uh, in fact, if you research it, there's a saying, the Roman road to salvation. And it's literally talking about how Paul steps through the different uh, reasons, you know, why we're needing to be saved. And he talks about the, uh, you know, the depravity of man or, or the sinfulness of man, the, the hopelessness of man trying to do it on his own, the love of God, how God gave himself to us. I think it's in Romans 5 and 8 where God demonstrates his love and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He talks about in Romans chapter 6 where the wages of sin is death, but gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And so he's in the first chapters of this book up to 12. It's basically giving you an explanation about you know, the condition of man how God saw us in our condition, how God chose to forgive us and, and provided a, a pathway of, of rescue for all of us. And um, so today I want to step into how, what do we do from the point of, of connecting with God? What does that look like? Not only what does it look like to us, but what should it look like to the people in the world? So that's just a short background about where he's coming from in the next several chapters of the book of Romans. In fact, till the end, it's really the practical guide to living a Christian life. But Romans chapter 12 really hits some really important points. And I want to talk about the first part of that today and then maybe dive in over the next couple of days to the remainder of that chapter because uh, it is really uh, good stuff and, and things that I think uh, can be very effective in helping us be a, a witness in the world and, and make a difference because really that's what we as believers and Christians ought to want to do is to make an impact, make a positive impact. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about negativity in the church and what the church hasn't done right. And uh, I think if we could get back to following the instructions that have been given us laid out in God's word, that we can make a great impact, positive impact. It can give us an opportunity to uh, really do some incredible things for the kingdom. And um, our world needs that right now. We need to be making that positive impact. We, we need to be a, a source of light in the middle of darkness. And so starting with verse number one, um, I'm going to go ahead and read the scripture down to verse five if you're following along. He says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. And here again, he's saying, So I've, I've laid out for you all the things that God has done for us. What should we do? And he's laying it out now. He says, Let your bodies be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person 
by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this same warning or this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies are many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. So Paul starts out this scripture by, first of all, telling us to look within ourselves and make the conscious decision to devote yourself, your, your body, your body a living creature, and to make sacrifice, not the sacrifice Christ made, which was to die for us. Our sacrifice to God is to live for Him. And how do we do that? We present ourselves. We say, here I am, Lord. I want to be used by you. I want to be touched by you. I want you to live through my life. So it's a presentation of yourself, daily presenting yourself. And then part of that presentation is allowing God to speak into you and that you wouldn't be conformed to the ways of the world, to the way the world does business, but you would be transformed by the power of God that would cause people to see you and it would change you and that through that process, there's a proving that takes place that creates a good and pleasing and perfect presence of God. And then he goes on to say, don't think you're better than you really are. And, you know, I think the first sign of spiritual maturity, one of the greatest signs of spiritual maturity, is the grace that you extend and the humility that you express. Um... We all want to feel good about who we are, and there's nothing wrong with that. that that's, there's a sense of having pride in oneself. But when you begin to live out from that emotion or that sort of uh, platform of pride, look at me, who I am, what I've done, then you become a stumbling block for yourself and for others. So he, he warns us all, don't think we're better than we are. We're just part of something bigger. All of us having a part to play. So evaluate yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given you. And then realize that you're just part of a greater body, a network of people that are important one to another. Every part having a specific function to play with many parts. And we all belong to each other. And of course we know that, that Jesus is the head of the body. And so as we look at our lives and reflect on who we are and where we're going and how we're getting there, we need to first of all present ourselves to God honestly and say, Lord, I want to be a part of what you are doing. So come in and show me. And Lord, help me to Conform not to the world, but be transformed by you and your presence so that I can prove what is that holy, perfect, and acceptable will you have for my life. And walking in all humility, realizing that I'm part of a, a bigger picture and I need to play my part and I need to do it with humility and with a honest belief in God and his presence. Um, I, I think those are just foundational to, to being effective in life. And every one of you will have an important part to play in God's work. No matter who you are, no matter where you're at in life, each one of us have a part that we can play. Some of you are prayer warriors who have lifted me up here for, for many years, and you have been consistent in that. And I appreciate that because... There are certain things that I face that are bigger than me, but by the power of God's prayers and your prayers lifting me up, I'm able to encourage people when I'm not encouraged. I'm able to, to provide um, some resources to people 
of which I couldn't do on my own. Some of you are great givers. And, and he goes into this in just a little bit, and I'll dive into that deeper over the next couple of days as we break down Romans chapter 12. But some of you are givers. Some of you are teachers. Some of you are encouragers. Some of you are, are just great people of, of leadership. But each one has to function in connection with the others. And through that networking, we build something that makes a huge difference as we look to the Lord and ask him to help us with the challenges that we face. I, I love war movies. That's sort of not a really good way to say it, but I enjoy watching how history unfolded. I uh, watched a lot of different shows and movies about World War II and, and some of the other great conflicts were in our history. One, one show that I watched in particular, I can't remember the title of the movie, but it was, it was all based around um, prisoners of war uh, in Thailand who built this railroad uh, to connect Thailand to India. They were being enslaved and made to do this by their Japanese captors. And in, it talked about this, it was told from a, a personal perspective of one of the soldiers, how when he got to the camp, there was great despair and agony and, and, and they were all just sort of selfish about the way they went about surviving and slowly but surely men were dying just every day. But then when they began to learn and grow and particularly when they allowed the word of God to begin to saturate their hearts and begin to show them how they should live out their life, even in the midst of the most difficult human experiences and going without so much that we would consider necessary to live, they began to thrive as a, as a group because they learned not only how to look inwardly for their strength, they learned how to assist and support each other. And it talked about even their captors, even the ones that were enslaving them, it profoundly touched them and changed them. And at the end of the the movie, it shows a picture of an older, two older gentlemen going to a graveyard, and it was one of the soldiers there and one of those that had been captive and how they had become friends. It's amazing what we can do when we allow God to let us be transformed by his power. And then we join together with other fellow believers. And you're saying, well, Pastor, I'm in isolation. How am I even able to join well, we're doing that right now. And many of you are, are doing it by uh, helping others. Today, just here at the church, our food pantry, again on Thursdays, we're helping people with groceries. Uh, one of our members is going to sit with one of the other members while her husband goes and, and goes to a doctor's appointment. And, and these kinds of activities where we just jump in, I've been calling people, others have been calling, and we've been encouraging each of you to sort of just find something positive to do. Just one thing that would be an unselfish act and asking God to, to work within you. Man, the impact you make, it may be a ripple, but you know how waves get started? It's with the ripple. Great impacts are made when each individual does something that impacts another life. And it resounds throughout our communities and throughout history. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for you. Hey, this is a word that we can really grow from. I encourage you to become hungry, passionate about your faith to the point that you're willing to hear God's voice, act upon God's word, and begin to impact the world that we live in. Because we have a great opportunity, as I've said. So let's be equipped to do the work that God has called us to do. I pray God has blessed you. I pray God will continue to help you in your life. I just want to say a prayer. And again, I just want to reiterate before I, I close in prayer. If you have a need or concern in your life, Private message me. 
You can email me at pastortc at cprcog.net. Text me on my telephone. Whatever it is you, you, you need or just want me to pray for you, please let us know. We want to be of help and service to each of you. God, I thank you so much for this opportunity again to, to serve and to, Lord, hopefully be an encouragement to someone, sharing your words, not mine, Lord, that really will change things. And, Father, help us not to be conformed to this world. Father, help us to be transformed by your word, by your Holy Spirit, so that as we begin to join together a people of like faith, Lord, we will impact our world for the good and that lives will be changed. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you for Jesus. And we just pray, Lord, watch over us and keep us. Bring healing to those that need healing within our congregation, within our community, within our state, within our world. Touch those that are serving in, in capacities where they're in danger. Protect them, watch over them. And Father, help us as a community to, Lord, do the things that we can do to assist and support others. Thank you, God, for all that you do. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and uh, we'll be talking to you real soon. Have a great day.